one, Tarnation! Uh, I meant to do that. And hey folks, this is Apple Geek, and welcome back to my channel for another reaction. This is My Little Pony Season 8, Episode 7, and I really have no announcements at this point, or any... I know nothing about the episode, so... I'm just gonna go ahead and get this started right away. Episode 7, starting now. Princess Celestia, I have an idea for your oh. anniversary. Oh, wow. My is that the new cat? Yes, it is. The 1111th year anniversary of when you first raised the sun. Good thing Pinkie Do Pie reminded us. We would have forgot to celebrate. Okay. You're not the ones. What did you have in mind? This to commemorate your first sunrise, I've written a play. We'd like to perform it at my school of friendship, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mind? Oh, of course not. Oh, <laughs> the play is a fit. Oh my word! Idea. Did she just Prince? Yes! Oh, yes, she did! For getting so excited. It's just when I was at Billy, my friends often put on plays. Oh, it was so Oh! Every pony coming together to create a magical experience to the share The window with just others. became a video screen. I've always believed theater brings out the best in us and forges a special bond of friendship. <gasps> How are you doing that with that window? Know you used to act? <laughs> oh, not me. I was always too busy with my magic lessons to be part of any plays myself. Mm. But still... Sound like anyone we know? Something I always wished I could experience. And you still can. Oh, Princess no. Celestia, we would be honored if you would be the star of our play. We would? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going places. I, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, before I get too far ahead of myself here, 1111th anniversary that we've now put like a firm date about this generic a thousand years it's actually like a little over 1100 years afterwards that might be interesting to play with uh, looking back through historical timelines and stuff but celestia acting in a play oh my word <laughs> she's acting like a little filly me to star in your play yeah when did that happen exactly <laughs> if you'll excuse us for a second Oh Don't my word! See, Spike? It's perfect. Princess Celestia has always wanted horse to play, and this one's about her. I guess. But how are we supposed to give her directions? She's the ruler of Equestria. She's also our friend. Have Celestia Starlight do it. Is always kind to every pony. So if we have a chance to finally do something for her, we should. Hmm. Come on. How many times has Celestia helped us, guided us? Been a warm, calming voice over our shoulder. Uh, she's but right behind. <laughs> Your invitation is very kind, but are you certain it's wise? I have no acting experience at all. <laughs> experience? You'll be playing yourself, and we'll all help you. That's <laughs> funny hearing Nicole Oliver say that. So much to the students if you are in our show. Well, if you're sure. <laughs> that smile. Yeah, what she said. Then I would be delighted to join your theater troupe. Wow. <laughs> Betty is rich. Good. Wormy apple cores, Pinky. How many times have I told Wormy you to take your special effects away from Watch my that mouth, young lady. 327. Oh, unless you just did. Then it's 328. Wow. I can't believe you've memorized your lines already, Fluttershy. Once you get past terrifying, paralyzing stage fright, the rest is easy. <laughs> now I just hope Princess Celestia says we can do our play. Um, about as soon that. As she sees these fabulous <laughs> costumes, all she'll be able to say is "Bravo!" Um. Heads up! Here comes our answer. <laughs> what is Pinky doing in that can? What the news, every pony? <laughs> Yeehaw! We get to put on our show. Even better, Princess Celestia is gonna be our star. <gasps> yeah, that's how I felt too. Celestia? <laughs> Starring in our play? This is huge! Well, that's she not inaccurate. At first, but I told her not to worry. With us helping, it'll all go smooth and silk! Sh she. <laughs> I must find the silk! These customs simply will not do! We have to take everything up to the next level! Mm -hmm. None of these old ideas will do! <laughs> <laughs> 
party cannon for princess size effects, we're gonna need big. Oh no, she's gonna get the big one. <laughs> oh my, where, where did she get that? That's an assault cannon. <laughs> Why in tarnation are y'all getting so? Wow. We've met Princess Celestia before, plenty of times. Those were formal things, galas, world saving. This is different. Imagine doing sweaty warm ups with a princess, blowing your nose in front of a princess, sitting around just talking with a princess. <laughs> I'm a princess. You talk to me. It's different. I, You're not a princess, I, princess. Oh, she I'm actually said it. <laughs> wants to experience we were all thinking it. The theater ponies have. To give her that, you just need to be yourselves. You, you really think so? Yeah, good luck with that. Ah, uh, quit, Brit. It's only a couple of pals getting together to put on a one's versary play. What could go wrong? Yeah, don't Please ever say what could go wrong. Don't ever like say that. Ahem. <clears throat> Nice outfit, Spike. And produced by Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> Page one, act one, scene one. Action! Once upon a time, before oh Celestia, Equestria was suffering terrible hardship. Raising the sun every morning was so hard. Oh, they got the students involved! Sorcerers, plus Star Swirl the Beast. Oh, they said that earlier, derp. <laughs> Okay. Oh, cool. Helping Star Swirl could use so much magic, they lost their powers forever. Man, straight out of the journal of the two sisters. Soon, Equestria would lose all its magic users. Then the land would be covered in darkness for eternity. Not bad. Even I can't believe how good my play is. The sets, the props, the outfits, they're all great. And here comes the best part. But then, a student named Celestia <laughs> discovered she had the power to raise the sun herself without draining her magic. Um, I'm loving the fact you, that Celestia? this is canon oh, now. Right, of course. Even more canon. <clears throat> oh no. It's time for a new day in Equestria. Louder! Um, what? <laughs> Oh, I said, it is time for a new day in Equestria. <laughs> oh, no. And your delivery was great. But maybe you should um, try it a tiny bit louder. For the ponies in the back. Royal Canterlot voice, please. Oh, yes, he has my Royal Canterlot voice. Thank you for the reminder, Twilight. It is time for a new day yes! in Equestria. <laughs> Beautiful! Oh Absolutely beautiful! Strong acoustics. My apologies. I'm still learning to hone my craft. No, no, uh, you're doing fine. <laughs> Why don't we try it one more time? Just like you're talking to me. It is time for a new day. Oh, now she's doing robot. <laughs> I'll get more energy. It's time for a new day in Equestria. <laughs> uh, how is that? Uh, honestly, great! Wow, it's hard to believe you've never done this before. Let's move on to the dance number. There are no words for this. This again. is glorious. Step, buck, leap, touch again. Step, buck, leap, touch. Got it. Moving on. Five, six, seven, eight. Come on, Star Swirl. Throw off that musty hat and let's have uh. a dance. Uh oh. Oh dear. Ouch. I think we have a problem. Yeah, our lead actress is a disaster. And how do you tell the ruler of Equestria what are we gonna that do? she's no good at Celestia, acting? She's terrible. It'll hurt her feelings, and I'll be a bad friend. But if I keep her in the show, she'll be the laughing stock of Equestria, yeah, and I'll be a worse mm -hmm. friend. You need to tell Celestia the truth, Twilight. Any other Thank you, Applejack. Why don't we just cancel the show? Real suggestions? <clears throat> no, think about it. Right now, most of Equestria doesn't even know we're doing a one'sversary play. If we shut it down, no but pony will no, ever no. miss it. So they'll never find out Princess Celestia. That's is not an option. That's not a real option. And she won't be embarrassed. Ah, it's the perfect plan. All right. I just finished telling everybody to come to our. <laughs> you did. Yeah! You should have 
seen how excited they got when they found out Celestia was in it. They said no. they were friends, and then their friends until their friends. Yeah. Every pony in Equestria is going to see this thing. Mm hmm. Not just uh, Ponyville, every pony in Equestria. Just a bright light of hope being snuffed. But that's okay. If we can't cancel the show, I know what I have to do. Be honest with Celestia and give the lead role to some pony Something else? Something tells me no. Not a chance. Nope. Twilight, you know truth is a huge part of friendship. Uh -huh. And so is making another pony's dreams come true. Look, I promised Celestia that this time she could be a part of the play, instead of just watching it. And I plan to keep that promise. But how? You yes, indeed. Me acting lessons? No, 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 no. More like oh, wow. a workshop with other actors. To take okay, I did not expect this tactic. Thank you so much, Twilight. This is what I always knew theater must be about. That special <laughs> stage pony bond of shared trust and honesty. Yeah, <laughs> that's really crazy. rubbing it in. Princess Celestia, meet Method Mare performers on stage and Raspberry Beret. Interesting names. Pleasure, your majesty. <laughs> The pleasure is all mine. If there's anything I can do to become a better equestrian thespian, I will. What do you have planned? Well, I thought we'd make it up as we go along. Uh, otherwise known as improvisation. Sure, yes, why not? And we can start as soon as we get out of this box. Really? Miming? What box? Yes, thank you. <laughs> How is miming relevant to this play? That sun will never rise again. Oh, they broke this. That's mm. why I have something even better. Oh no. What it what what oh, It's a perfect substitute. Ex mm, yeah. Mm, mm. It was the perfect substitute. <sighs> Please give me something to be happy about. Oh no. Wait. Let's try. Is Celestia going to end up in a sun costume and she'll rise herself? Oh, it's so snowy today. I'm calling that right now. I'm. I think that's a possibility. Should I get you a blanket? All aboard! The Ponyville Express is leaving the station. She's sitting like a person. It is. I don't see anything. <sighs> weeping willows in the wind. Wow, she's not getting this at all. As we bow to fate. Well, what do you feel? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> the classroom floor under my hooves. Does that count? <laughs> yes. I wanna know. <laughs> Wait for it. Marshmallow, sure. Why not? Burning marshmallow. And that's gonna burn the whole stage down. What means? Like burning marshmallow. Uh, no, no, it is not. <laughs> what are they doing now? The simplest acting exercise they could think of: a game of charades. Uh, a puppy, a duck-billed platypus. What? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> oh, what? what? My love for Equestria and all the ponies in it. Twilight, you felt what I, I was emoting, didn't you? <sighs> Yeah. day. <laughs> That's true. Oh my Luna, everybody's here. Mm -hmm. tried, but we have to face facts. We can't make Celestia an actress, so there's only one thing to do. Tell her that is? Truth, finally. No. <sighs> I've rewritten the script to give Celestia a more artistic part with no lines and to make sure the show's a hit. I whipped up the beans. This is flashy as fake sun. <gasps> what is? Oh no! Uh, uh no, 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 no. Untested magic fireworks that I bought in a back alley from Trixie at midnight BNC. Oh, there's no, 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 no. <laughs> oh no!
Trixie Snow, black market fireworks dealer. Okay. And she's right behind you. Yep. Twilight, if you honestly felt I was a bad actress, why didn't you didn't tell you me? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to insult your mm -hmm. acting. It's just, uh, I got so stressed. Yeah, you have a problem with that. But that's no excuse for what I said. You have every right to be upset with me. I'm not upset because you insulted my acting. You're not? No, because I'm upset you because in all the time we've known each tell other, the truth. I thought I taught you about the importance of friendship, trust, and honesty. <laughs> Celestia, wait! No! Oh. You can't fly away now! Look! Ponies are taking their seats for the show. Mm. <laughs> Standing room only! Did I do a good job of advertising for this thing or what? Dash! Sorry. We can't yeah. put on Let's a go with or what? <laughs> You go find Celestia. We'll figure out a way to stall this thing till you get back. Who's gonna play Celestia? Or are they actually gonna Good manage luck. to stall it? No pony's gonna volunteer to try to tame that. <laughs> no pony. Indeed. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Peer pressure. This is not good. So, <laughs> <clears throat> who likes juggling? <laughs> Princess Celestia. Poor Spike. Please wait. Can we talk? I'm afraid I haven't much to say, Twilight. Oh. All right then, just listen. You've guided me since I was a filly. You've given me knowledge and advice and friendship. <sighs> just once, I wanted to be able to give something back to you. <sighs> I know what I did was wrong. I should have told you the truth, but I promised you could be in our play. I had to make it work. Nothing would make me feel worse than knowing I disappointed you. You really mean that? Of course! I look up to you more than any pony I've ever met. I hate to let you down. Mm. Like I did. Oh. You had good intentions. Classic case Twilight, of doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. The truth is always better than a well-meant lie. Yes. Did Applejack remind you? <coughs> About a hundred times. <clears throat> and now? Because I didn't listen to her, I've ruined your whole one's versary. Well, mm, there's I a way out of this. Know about that. Isn't there an old saying? The show must go on. There may be a way for us to save the play yet. But how? Is she I gonna mean, be the sun? If I'm being completely honest, you're not an actress. No, but I am a princess. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Bad news. This play is officially a disaster. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I know a thing or two about how to deal with those. You okay. came Okay. Yes, but let's celebrate later. Right now, we have a show to do. But, but, but how? The audience is about to riot! We have no backdrop, and our lead actress is... Just let her speak, no please. No longer in that role. Rarity, Applejack, Pinkie Pie, Twilight, go calm the audience. Let them know the play will start in just a minute. Okay. Rainbow Dash, bring us some clouds and place them behind the stage. Wow. There, that's our new backdrop. Starlight, do you have a copy of the script? Spike, you narrate the play. Fluttershy okay. will be our new lead. Yeah. Oh my. Me playing you? Will <laughs> you watch me playing you? Oh no, oh no, I think my stage. Princess Fluttershy confirmed! <laughs> Visualize with me. You're a princess. Regal. Commanding. Confident. Oh. Feel the rising sun's warmth. Oh! Equestria needs you. She's no actress, but she's a heck of a director. <laughs> Poor Celestia. Equestria was suffering a terrible hardship. Raising the sun every morning was so hard that it took five unicorn sorcerers, plus Star Squirrel the Bearded, to do it. Nice effects. You call those great sorcerers? Oh, come on. Hecklers, what should we do? Spike, 
Improvise. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and uh, raising the sun each day was super draining. But you can see that for yourselves, right? I mean, do these guys look beat up or what? Guys <laughs> are so stressed. He's got kinks in his horn. Oh. <laughs> oh. But that's okay. Because it turns out Celestia had the special power to raise the sun all by herself. It's oh my artwork. Artwork. All the artwork. <laughs> uh, in all the commotion, we forgot we don't have a sun. What do we do? Uh, we play charades. Okay. What are you gonna do? Oh, that is cheating! That is cheating! <laughs> I had no idea this production would have such elaborate special effects! <laughs> Judging by how many flowers the audience oh, had, it boy. Seems play was a success. I just feel bad you never got a chance to actually be in it. You shouldn't. I never felt I had to be on stage to be a part of the show. All I ever wanted was to share an honest bond of creativity, artistry, and happiness with my friends. And that's exactly what I got to do. Thank you for saving our play, Princess Celestia. You're welcome, this Twilight. Was awesome. But from now on, none of you will have to call me Princess anymore. Did, wait, wait, what? What? Eh? Huh? What? Don't? What? No. I had so much fun tonight, I've decided to give up my crown, step down from the Oh, she is totally and acting now. My time to the theater. <laughs> Trollestia! Gotcha. Maybe I'm not such a bad actress after all. <laughs> Just off the cuff trolling is where Celestia shines, not manufactured drama. It, mm, mm, yeah. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> this is this was awesome, like How do I even describe it? Like, this is the most princess-like that Celestia's ever been on screen. I mean, yeah, we've seen her in the very formal role, but to have a more casual-type environment, yet still doing the, the you know, like the director-type uh, stuff, taking control of a situation, a bad situation, and turning it around. I mean, just the true leadership qualities. Oh, that was fun to see. All right, I, I need to rewatch this again, and I, I will be right back with my thoughts for you guys. Stay tuned. Well, I know I said after last episode that it was going to be hard to beat the, for this season. One episode later, it's been beat. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the last episode was fantastic, and it's probably in like my top three favorite CMC episodes in the entire series, but... Um, yeah, this here was something truly special. Uh, this was easily the best piece of writing we've seen this season, or one of the best pieces of writing we've seen. Um, and it's, it's such a huge cast of characters, all written together well, balanced well, and huge character development for Celestia, like unprecedented. And it, I believe this is the first time. I mean, other than maybe the season six premiere, this is kind of really the first time that we've seen all the main seven, Spike and Celestia, all together working on like the same task, the same goal. They're all directly part of the story, not like some were more in background roles and things like that, or going off doing different things. This was it was all focused on this play. So that I, I don't think that's really ever been done before, and and even with all that many characters involved. I, a lot of times this it's almost too much in one episode which is why we typically have a lot fewer characters in focus but this was just balanced so well it was fantastic and you know for Celestia we've seen her in a lot of formal roles uh, being very princess like and regal and whatnot um, you know just just brief little glimpses of, of more personality here and there that have just kind of you know wet her appetite a little bit, you know, and led us to theorize about things, but we never really saw, uh, you know, like the real Celestia. And 
And uh, well, we we did of course get a royal problem where we saw her and Luna have the little you know sisterly spat and and whatnot. But even there, they were focused on trying to fulfill their their daily you know royal duties and such. And it, even Celestia's chats with uh, with Starlight, it was a bit more of a a formal, casual, if if you will. I mean, it wasn't quite the the regal air and stuff, but she wasn't really there to just you know open herself up to you know all kinds of personal stuff and whatever. Um, here it was just it was fantastic seeing the way that she was acting around twilight there i mean the way that she just took off and started prancing around like a little filly that shocked the heck out of me as, as you saw and but the, the the fact that she would allow herself to behave like that in twilight's presence and then not not only the behavior but also to open up and share a you know a, a bit of her own personal history you know about the the theater stuff from the past that she had always wanted to be a part of and stuff. That that's something you know for for someone in her position, only your closest friends are going to see you like that. So I think that speaks volumes about how she can how she sees Twilight now. Twilight is an equal peer, a very close friend of hers. You know she can really let her hair down around Twilight like that. She feels comfortable and she trusts Twilight. And unfortunately, in this episode, that trust was kind of violated a, a little bit because of the honesty issue, as as I'll get to. But, uh, you know, and just, you know, w with everything that Celestia has done for Twilight over the years, it makes perfect sense why Twilight would be looking for a way to be able to finally give something back. You know, it's, it's kind of like trying to, you know, buy the perfect gift for somebody who already has everything that they really want or need. It's like, how do you find a gift for somebody who has everything it's a it's a very difficult position to be in that's where twilight was at um so when it when celestia mentioned that she was interested in theater and i was like hey we've got this play all about you like you can be you in the play like this makes perfect sense and you know if i was in twilight's uh shoes there hooves whatever that i probably would have been right there with her like that my mind would have gone like that yes it's too perfect like this was meant to happen it's so so perfect so uh, but yeah it, it it's easy to empathize with that situation it's easy to see why we went there but uh yeah it definitely is an issue of jumping to conclusions you know going back and listening to it again you'll note that uh celestia said that she, you know, really appreciated theater and everything that it um, that it had to offer, and she has al always wished that she could have been a part of it. But she never said that she wanted to actually be an actress in a play, much less a lead actress. And that that should have been red flag there. The fact that she had never tried to act in a play um, probably should have been a little bit of a vetting process there first. But Twilight was just she she wasn't thinking about that at that point. She was just too excited about the idea of actually having Celestia in the play and be able to do something special for her finally after all this time. So the, you know, that logic kind of went out the window at that point. And, you know, Cel Celestia is, as we saw, she's much better with, you know, this off-the-cuff humor, just the trolling and, and stuff like that, just with close friends, whatever. And a lot of people are like that. They, you know, you can joke around and be funny and have a good time with friends and, and kid around. But when you actually get up on stage and try to, to put on a manufactured performance, that's a whole different experience, a whole different scenario. And not everyone does good at that. Some people can learn it. Some people are naturally gifted at it. But it just it isn't for everyone. And clearly that was the case with, with Celestia. And <laughs> got to say, that was just a special treat watching or, or rather listening to Nicole Oliver go nuts in this episode with this character. Having met her a couple times, I can tell you that Nicole Oliver is a lot like Celestia in, in real life. She's such a great person and and also such a very talented actress on, on multiple fronts. And to listen to her say, you know, I don't know the first thing about acting. <laughs> like, well, granted, she's an actress, so she can act like that but it's like man it would it should have been hard for her to say that with an actual straight face i wish i could have seen that recording session uh and and for her to actually act badly to have celestia act badly that's hard for somebody who's good at acting to actually act 
badly and convince the audience that you are a bad actor and, and not make it look like you're just forcibly act, you know trying to make yourself look like you're bad at acting it, that is very difficult to do and she nailed it so that that just again speaks volumes to her talent as an actress but anyway off that rabbit trail um for for twilight you know aside from the mistake of jumping to conclusions which she loves to do uh, the, the mistake, the big mistake here is that for some reason she got this idea in her head. I don't know where she got this from, but she just got this idea that she was going to be a bad friend by telling Celestia the truth that, that, that she's a bad actress. Like, I, I don't know like what lessons in the past that she, what experiences that she's gone through will lead her to believe that's being a bad friend. I mean, she's learned many times about the the value of honesty in a, in a friendship. So I, I don't think it was really that. I think it was actually more the fact that she just she could already see that things were not going to go well, but she was already committed to this, to making this happen, and she did not want to admit the truth to herself and end up embarrassing herself in front of Celestia. I think that was probably more what the problem was there kind of you know underneath all of that but uh, unfortunately she had lost sight of the the fact that you know being honest with celestia is what would have really made her happy i mean yeah it might have been it might have hurt a little bit to hear the truth but still that's it's better far better than than the alternative and you know if if they had ended up canceling the play that would have been a lousy way to go because they still would have been lying to Celestia. I mean, there there's no way with all of this that they would have then admitted this to her. They were bound and determined to lie, not have to tell her that she was a terrible actress. So they, that still would have been a lie. So I'm, I'm really kind of glad that Dash eliminated that possibility from, <laughs> from happening. And I have no problem with Rainbow Dash whatsoever. Zero fault on Dash's part. Because she was doing exactly what they wanted her to do, advertise the play like crazy. I mean, they wanted everybody to come to this play because it was going to be such a big deal. And Dash advertised it like there was no tomorrow. So, awesome. Awesome work on Dash's part. You know, it, just, it wasn't her fault that they ended up uh, in this inconvenient uh, situation with, uh, with Celestia. That was a problem of their own making. So, and... Uh, and as I said, you know, I, I do very much appreciate the fact that Twilight wanted badly to do something nice for, for her mentor, to give back in some way. I totally understand that. She absolutely had the best of intentions. And, you know, I really give credit to Twilight for, for one thing in this. The, you know, the way that she tried to, uh, you know, give Celestia some acting lessons. Now, granted, they were already in the middle of the lie. By doing that, it would have been better to say to tell her the truth and then say, "Well, okay, no, you're not a good actress. Like this is not, you know, you're going to embarrass yourself if you do this. But hey, we've got these other, you know, acting ponies here that might be able to help you, help train you, and maybe we can get you up to speed quickly and still do the play. That would have been a better way to go, um, rather than immediately lying to her about it, saying you're already good, but we want to make you better. But regardless, it's just, you know." That was actually a really smart move on Twilight's part to to try and help somebody teach her how to act. That you know, fortunately it didn't work out, but that was actually a really genius move on on Twilight's part. Um. So, uh, but yeah, unfortunately it just became another situation that this whole thing became another situation of square peg in the round hole. Round hole that just like back in the the season premiere with the school. How Twilight was insistent on, no, we have to do the school this way because that's the only way we'll get accredited. And, you know, it's we're, yeah, we're throwing away the, you know, the actual mission of the school to do. We're sacrificing the, you know, the whole friendship thing we're trying to do in the first place just to get approval. So what's the point? But we have to do it because. And it, it just trying to force something to happen that's not going to happen is only going to make things worse. And that's basically what was happening here once again. Uh, so... And the, the thing that really bugs me about all this is, you know, again, Twilight is saying that she thought she'd be a bad friend for for telling Celestia the truth about this. But instead of that, instead of having, you know, the, the pain of telling her the truth, you actually were going to let her actually get on stage, try to act in the middle of the performance in front of a live audience and make a complete fool out of herself in front of everyone? 
how is that being a good friend? That, that is the opposite of being a good friend, you know. Stringing your friend along, making them think there's some, that there's something they're not, and then allowing them to, to you know, make a fool of themselves, that that is not how to treat a friend. So I really wish you could have realized that. But uh, again, she just gets, you know, stubbornly committed to these ideas, and she didn't want to, you know, she, she doesn't... Even when she realizes that things aren't going well, when Twilight just gets stuck on these ideas and she she doesn't allow herself to take a step back and reassess the situation and become flexible in trying to find uh, another path to, you know, to make things work a different way. Maybe not the way she originally intended, but like, hey, that's not going to work anyway. Trying to force is just going to make things worse, so let's go with plan B. Twilight just stubbornly sticks to plan A, like, every time. And... You know, it, it, in this case, she didn't even really... It, she has a habit of forgetting these friendship lessons that she learned. Here, she wasn't even really forgetting it. She was just outright rejecting it. I mean, you had Applejack throughout the entire episode just nagging at her about, you know, hey, ha you know, haven't you learned by now that honesty is, is important and you have to be honest with her to make this work? And, it, you know, Twilight's just like, not a chance. Like, nope, we're not going there. I mean, she, she just outright refused to, to listen to logic and reason in this. So that this is almost one of Twilight's worst breakdowns yet from, from that perspective. And, uh, uh, and yeah, so of course Celestia was mad at her. I mean, Celestia was... This is the maddest we've ever seen her. I mean, this is even way worse than when she got a, a little peeved at Twilight back in the, the Canterlot wedding. This was way worse. I mean, the Twilight basically just ended up lying right to her face. I mean, it's kind of behind the curtain, but that's beside the point. Um, you know, she probably never thought that she would see Twilight do something like this after everything that Twilight's been through and all that she's learned. You know, she, Celeste even said, didn't Applejack tell you that this was not going to be right? And it's like, yeah, only about a hundred times. You know, this is... <laughs> Here once again, Apple did, this could have ended with Applejack saying, Dear Princess Celestia, I didn't learn anything. I was right all along. Because <laughs> it, it, perfect example of this. I mean, she had the right idea right from the beginning. But uh, yeah, well, just in general, it's more of Applejack being Applejack. I mean, she's trying to bring everybody back down to earth. I mean, she got mad at Pinky with that huge cannon and everything. And it's like, hey, we've, you know... We've worked with Twilight, or we worked with Celeste before. What's the big deal? You know, just like, come on, come back down to Earth, everyone. But anyway, um, but yeah, just we've seen many times before. Twilight just you know throws aside all these friendship lessons that she's that she's learned. Uh, it was big time. This happened big time in the movie. Um, you know, she really kind of went off the rails in that one. Twilight's Kingdom. She she rejected her friends to a point, shouldered all this responsibility on her own, tried to make things uh, work and stuff. Lesson zero, she jumped to the conclusion that uh, that uh, Celeste was going to come down on her harshly because she didn't, you know, fulfill a weekly friendship report and whatever, and then just manufactured this ridiculous situation and got herself into even more trouble. And, uh, you know, she, she just does all this stuff. She jumps to conclusions, she shoulders too much responsibility, she gets herself stressed out because of all that and starts making bad decisions and forgetting her friendship lessons. And it just, it, it becomes this vicious cycle of compounding the problem and, and making things worse and worse. And, you know, so she gets all stressed out and, and everything. And she admitted to Celestia for, I think one of the, I think this is the first time she's actually come out and said, I got stressed. And it says, but that's no excuse. I mean, it, it, it was a reason it was a reason why she was making bad decisions because she got herself all stressed out. But no, it's not an excuse because she created the situation in the, in the first place. You know, we all do stupid things when we get stressed out. That's human nature. But Twilight tends to manufacture stress. I mean, she just does all these things that compound the problem and it gets herself super stressed out. And it just, and like I said, of course she meant well. But that doesn't excuse her excuse her actions, which thankfully she admitted here. And that this is this was actually kind of a secondary issue. I mean, the, the main problem here was the the matter of, of honesty. But all these little flaws of Twilight that have never firmly been addressed 
very clearly created this problem in the first place. And this is the closest we've come to seeing, that, that I can think of, where we've seen Twilight actually admit some of these faults. So even though it was kind of a secondary focus, I'm really hoping that she's finally waking up and realizing that she cannot keep doing this. She's done this time and time again, and it backfires every time. She's got to be able to move past this. So I'm, I'm really hoping we see some improvement for her on this going forward, finally. But yeah, um, with, the, with all that aside, I mean, it's awesome seeing the way that uh, Celestia just stepped in and to save the day, uh, becoming a, the, the director of, of the play. And th th this was fantastic. Like, this was the best moment for Celestia practically ever. I mean, again, we've seen her in, like, the regal, royal type scenario and stuff. And it was there, there's been moments here and there. But, I mean, the way she just came in, took charge, she assessed the situation... She, you know, started delegating tasks to everyone based on their, on their, their unique abilities and whatnot. Um, she, the, the way that she stepped in with Fluttershy and calmed her down and, and focus, uh, helped her focus on the task and stuff. That was amazing. I say that that freak out from Fluttershy was like the absolute cutest freak out ever. It's just like, oh no, like I'm gonna play you while you're over there watching me play you, and oh no, I think my stage right is coming. coming. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was just amazing. Um, best freak out ever from from Fluttershy. Um, but it just yeah, the way that Celeste can just you know firmly, gently you know, calm somebody down and, and help build them up and support them and stuff. It's just, it's amazing. I so said, these, these leadership qualities, like, we can just see so much more of her in, in, in this. We can see why she is the ruler of the land and why things work as well as they do in the land of Equestria. <sighs> oh, and she even played to, to Spike's strength too, uh, strength too with the, the whole improv thing. And I mean, I, I really felt bad for Spike at that point because he'd already been kind of pushed around in that, in that episode is, you know, being forced to stall for the play and stuff and getting hit by, by tomatoes and whatever. But, you know, he is good at the improv thing. It, it worked, worked out well. And, you know, Celestia knew that and used that. So that was cool. And so overall, Spike was awesome in, in this episode, I, I gotta say. You know, it's just, um, you know, his voice logic and reason, you know, he, he did his best to help out. Um, um, you know, he performed well under pressure and just... Yeah, great performance from Spike in this one. Uh, and then, of course, I, I just gotta say, Celestia cheated by actually raising the sun for this play. Like, I, seriously, I thought that this was gonna be the, a case where she would realize that she wasn't a good actress, but then they still needed to get her in the play because everyone was expecting to, her to be in the play, so then they end up dressing her in a sun costume and having her raise herself out of the floor or something. That's where I thought it was going to go, but I actually like the way this turned out better, just having her off to the side, being a, a supportive director. That, that was great. Um, and oddly, the audience didn't, didn't, didn't seem to be mad about that at all. So, okay, sure, what, whatever. But man, Luna was peeved. <laughs> she was mad when the sun started popping over the hill. I mean, that I'm positive that that was not the appropriate time for the sunrise. It was basically in the middle of the night there. I mean, probably early, honestly, it was probably early evening for, you know, everybody to be gathering for a play at that time. So, it's like, as I'm sure you've heard by now, I was like, wait, Celeste, you refused to move the sun to, to do this, you know, spotlight thing for the concert at the Friendship Festival, where, like, basically the entirety of Equestria is gathered at Canterlot, but then for this little play here in Ponyville, you're willing to raise the sun just for that. Uh, logic who needs it <laughs> so yeah make of that what you will but um anyway um I, I i do have to say regarding the play itself um i, I know this commentary is gonna go long but I, I i i gotta say this i love the fact that they took this like pretty much directly out of the journal of the two sisters and have further you know canonized even more of that journal in the show now i mean it already has been canon back in uh from castlemania and stuff but now we got more of it here that said there were some inconsistencies 
Luna actually should have been part of this play too, because both Celestia and Luna were involved in, in these events. I mean, that I understand that would have muddied the story a bit here. It needed to be focused on Celestia for this to work well, but... Uh, basically, the the, the story from uh, from the journal is you know here's the book again, awesome book, pick it up if you don't have it. Uh, is the final is coming down to the final journal entries in the in the book, and it explained how uh, basically back in that day, as we saw in the play, uh, teams of unicorns were raising the sun and moon because uh, Celestia and Luna didn't yet know that they could do it. Stars roll uh, was the the strongest unicorn, and he he performed both cycles, both morning and night. But he did so with teams of five other unicorns for for each cycle, different different teams of them. So ten unicorns plus Star Swirl handed this morning and night in groups of six. And, uh, and unfortunately, it was so uh, so stressful on their magic powers to be able to do this that one by one, all the adult unicorns had all their magical powers sapped out of them. Only Star Swirl was was strong enough to endure all this day in and day out. But then they finally got to a point where all the adult unicorns had lost their magic powers. Star Swirl tried one last time to uh, lower the moon and raise the sun himself, and all his power got got sapped out. And his mane was brown at the time. That was stated like three different times in the journal. He had a brown mane, but it turned gray at that point. So I'm thinking the draining of magic actually like started draining their life force away. And that's when he came to Celestia and Luna and said, hey, look, you know, you two need to try doing this yourself because we're out of options at this point. But he already kind of knew. I mean, he'd been time traveling, so he already kind of, you know, ha had uh, had spoilers, and he knew that they were destined to do this. So if he's like, okay, now is the time. This is the time when when you need to to start doing this. So Celestia and Luna simultaneously flew up into the sky. Luna tried to lower the moon, and Celestia tried to raise the sun at the exact same time. They did so successfully, and when they landed afterwards, they realized that they had gotten their cutie marks. That was the point at which they got their cutie marks. So, uh, and, and that was cool because then they realized they were, you know, it was the same markings that they had already seen down on the Tree of Harmony with the sun and moon symbols. And they realized at that point, hey, this is actually, you know, predestined, like we were meant to do this. They already kind of kind of knew it, but now this was confirmation. And furthermore, the, uh, not only will, are, unlike the unicorns, their powers are not drained by the sun and moon. They actually, their, their powers end up getting supercharged by the sun and moon. I don't know if that's specifically because they're alicorns or because of the special connections they have to those celestial bodies. But the, the, the their own magic got supercharged by doing that and they were able to use that, that enhanced power to restore the magic of all the adult unicorns, including Star Swirl. So that was a really awesome note to end the journal on, I, I must say. But uh, but yeah, that's that's the whole story there that this was kind of uh, adapted from. So uh, I, I wish they'd kind of had Luna involved in some way, and I wish they had made a point of saying this is the point they got their cutie marks. But still, it was fun to see you know an adaptation from the journal make it into a show. Uh, yet another adaptation from the journal. So... And I, I, I wondered if Starcer was going to pop in at some point and say, No, you, this isn't the way it happened. You're doing it wrong. But again, that, that would have taken away from the story and, and whatever. So, um, And also, I, you know, I love the fact that they had the, the, the young six, the students from the, uh, the school uh, involved in the, in the play, too. That was really cool to see. I really hope we get back to them soon. I don't know how long it's going to take here, but... I do at least love the fact that just about every episode this season has had some mention of the school or some appearance by the students. They're not just forgotten about, like they're actively taking part in events as the season rolls on here. So I, I love that we're getting this continuous continuity that way. Very good very good job on the on the the writer's part and the showrunner's part for keeping that active. Oh, uh, one last thing of the, the characters that the students were playing. I don't know who all of them are. We don't really have names for all of them, but Yona had a green outfit on with a green clover leaf as a cutie mark on it. I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be representative of Clover the Clever, which was Star Swirl's apprentice. So I am. Hmm. Is that foreshadowing of more things to come? Are we going to see more bits of the past in some way here? 
again, we haven't seen any of the pillars yet. Things could get interesting when they come back around. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. And don't forget, the Star Swirl knows how to time travel, so anything's possible. But yeah, this at this point, this is easily my favorite episode of the season. Um, just you know, well written, well paced, clear moral lessons, solid resolution that some of these episodes have been lacking on. Um, a huge cast of characters that all played their part well. I mean, we we got more character development for Celestia in this episode than pretty much all the past episodes combined, including a royal problem. I mean, from you know revealing a bit of her personal history. You know, uh, revealing, you know, talking about a childhood dream, you know, real emotions from her. I mean, we got to see her just, you know, jump, literally jumping for joy, getting really angry at Twilight, and then sad over, over that whole situation. And it just, and then seeing her step in and, and just, you know, show true leadership and whatever. That just, wow. Celestia was on point in this episode like never before. So. Now, now I kind of hope we'll go back to Luna and give her another episode because, I mean, she yeah, she's had more time in the spotlight than, than Celestia, so this is kind of, uh, ironically, so this is kind of, uh, you know, an equalization here, but it has been quite a while since we've really gotten to focus strongly on, on Luna. It would be kind of fun to step back to that again and see how she, just how far she's come in, in her reintegration into modern culture, so to speak. <laughs> I think she still struggles with that a little bit. You know, it's it's hard to get out of, you know, the way things were a thousand years ago. So and that's also why I can't wait to see the Pillars again, because I'd like to see how they're faring amongst all of this. So, but yeah, fantastic episode. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I uh, hope you guys had uh, fun watching this with me and listening to my thoughts on this. And I will see you again, hopefully very soon, for the next episode. Till then, have a great one.